Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so I've decided in the end that I am actually going to do the Extreme Super Battle Road guides as separate videos because I recorded the first couple and like uh, even halfway through the video is going to be over an hour long. So obviously, you know, even with timestamps being able to help you find the stage that you need to look at the guide for, that's obviously going to be super annoying very very long video so i feel like it probably is best to break it down into stages so i'm going to record this generic intro that i'm then going to put in front of each one of the guides because i already recorded a lot of them you know expecting that i was going to put them together as one video so they don't have their own proper intro so most of them just start with me going so next up this stage so there's no proper actual video uh, intro so i'm going to record this as well as an outro that i can whack on the end uh, and we're going to put these in front of all of the guides so between now and the time that the stages drop which should be tuesday evening in the us wednesday morning in the uk all of these videos should be out in time for the stages to be released so you guys can get some advice on teams for beating those stages so i think i mention it in each one of the guides i recorded already anyway but make sure you let me know for this particular video for this stage what your team build is going to be down below in the comment section and if there's any units that you think i missed out that i should have talked about let me know that down below and we can continue the discussion down there as well so if you do find the guide helpful do smash that like button subscribe to the channel and let's go ahead and jump in Okay, so next up we have giant form and strap yourself in for this one boys because it is going to be brutal This is probably going to be one of the hardest ones for a lot of people Especially if you are missing some of the units because as you can see the category is not particularly big already to start with So this one is going to be interesting. So first up we have the AGL Tapion who is the main leader uh, Obviously with his easy a he is a very solid unit uh, three key 160 across the board for his leader skill he also increases the amount of times that your allies can transform so if you're running double tapey on leads you can get multiple transformations out of the same unit which is good um, he lowers attack and defense on super which is very effective for super battle road he has solid defense as well as having 50 percent damage reduction so basically the way you're going to be running this stage pretty much is you have your tapey on and the friend tapey on on both rotations in slot one because they are going to be the main tank and then the rest of the rotation kind of flows from there so once you get to uh, below 50 percent hp then obviously he will transform into the harudagan they didn't really do much for harudagan post easy a um, obviously he does a little bit more damage but he doesn't get any extra key or anything like that so you've still got to try and get six key to super attack with him every time but you're getting those couple of turns of free damage that's where the RNG for this stage is really going to come into play is how often are you, do you get transformations is directly going to affect how difficult the stage is going to be for you. So Tapion is a must run as the leader. Um, if you don't have him, the only other option is Slug uh, in terms of who has an actual giant form leader skill. But his is only 120. So already you're missing out on a lot of stats. Uh, he also isn't that great. He's got 80% defense um so he's really not a very good unit i don't know if i'd even recommend bringing him on the team in general but if you don't have a leader you might be forced to use him but obviously tapion is by far the uh, best choice for the leader so slug like i say he's an honorable mention i guess because of his leader skill but ideally you do not want to be using him so next up we have lr super baby 2 so he's the only lr on the category um, you can't make a team out of his leader skill, unfortunately. Um, but he does lower attack on both of his supers, which is useful. He has reasonable defense. Um, there's He gets extra buffs when there's a pure Saiyans or hybrid Saiyans enemy. But uh, we do actually have one on every single stage. So that is actually quite useful. So he is getting the extra attack buffs. But obviously that doesn't help him out defensively. Uh, he has a high chance to turn into a giant 8 when HP is 40% or less. And then, of course, once he gets his transformation, he does get extra key per key sphere obtained because he is technically an LR giant ape. So he has a 12 key and an 18 key super. 
Um, and yeah, he's just a very good damage dealer for the team. His links are okay, because obviously a lot of units on this team are going to have links like Transform, which he doesn't have. He does have big bad bosses. There's one or two units you can bring that have that. But his link's not the best for the team. But he is a very solid unit overall. So definitely a good choice to bring in terms of power. Uh, next up, we have the Metal Cooler. So again, you can't really make a team with his leader skill. He lowers attack on super. Uh, his defense nowadays is obviously very outdated. 80% defense is not great. Uh, he gets an extra bit of attack with each attack received and recovers HP at the end of the turn if you were attacked. But, I mean, with no item active, he is going to be taking a lot of damage. He gets his guaranteed transformation when you're at HP 50% or less. And then, of course, the uh, giant, like the Metal Cooler Core, doesn't have any special abilities or anything. But is obviously uh, guaranteed. So you can, like, chain transformations between, like, him and uh, Tapion by going into the second and third fight under 50% HP. Um, and it gives you a nice little start to get some free damage. But untransformed he's definitely not a great unit for esbr so now we move on to the easy a great ape so obviously global got easy a's for three of these great apes and they became much better um obviously they're not designed to be slot one units because they get uh, a lot of defense on super attack as well as the fact that not only from their passive but they have the raises attack and defense as a super attack effect so this is these are the kind of units that are perfect to run in slot two when you then have a tapion in slot one um so vegeta pretty decent uh, when HP is 80% or less, he gets another 80% attack buff. So when that's active, he actually has the potential to put out a pretty big attack stat. He also has big bad bosses. So there is a little bit of synergy between him and the uh, baby. So that can be very useful because obviously big bad bosses being active. Very, very good link. And then when he transforms into a great ape, uh, he does destructive damage to the enemy. Um, sorry, massively raises attack temporary destructive damage and a medium chance to stun forgot to click the easy a tab so the chance to stun is really good because if you're on your final turn of the ape transformation and you're able to stun multiple enemies potentially um, that can be really good because a definite strategy is target down one enemy for the first turn and then in the second turn of the ape transformation try and hit say it's one of all three enemies are still alive try and hit all three enemies with a super and if rng is on your side you could stun all three of them which would obviously be very very useful going into the next turn and then of course the ape passive he has two extra key so you only have to get four key in order for him to super attack so next up we have the kid goku who is in a similar position uh, most of their passives are very similar they just have one minor difference so vegeta gets that extra attack Whereas Goku gets a medium chance of performing an additional super when HP is 80% or less, which is pretty decent. Um, especially because he raises defense on super, so getting that additional super can be effective. And then of course, once you transform into the giant ape, it's exactly the same. Destructive damage, medium chance to stun. So all the same things apply. Definitely can be very useful to stun in the final turn of the ape transformation. And then next up we have Raditz, who with his easy A uh, became a nuker. So the more orbs you can pick up, obviously the more damage he does, the higher his defense can be. If you can pick up a lot of orbs, he can actually be very, very good defensively. And then if you're below 80% HP, he also gets an attack buff. It's only, it's, it's only on super specifically for some reason, but you shouldn't have too much trouble super attacking with him anyway. So, and again, his great ape is exactly the same. The destructive damage, medium chance to stun, and the two extra key. So a lot easier to super attack. So these three all going to be very, very valuable on the team. Um, I don't think they're even out on JP yet, which is uh, obviously a bonus for Global. So next up, we have our boy Kumba. So I think he's one of the units that potentially will get an easy A next year. Um, he is not the best defensively. I mean, he has 150% defense, which is pretty good. But he's not a unit that you can just park in front of a whole load of attacks and expect, expect him to tank them all like an absolute wall. But... He is very good. He also has a high chance of stunning superclass enemies after receiving an attack. So if we go back to the list, every single enemy you fight in this run is superclass. So if you get lucky, you can take the risk. I mean, obviously you can use a damage reduction item if you want, although essentially it would be a waste if it actually goes off. But you could put this guy in slot one 
and basically just cross your fingers that the first attack that hits him activates his passive and then he stuns everybody and you get a free turn because it's only for that turn but even so it basically gives you a free turn and then of course when you're below 50 percent hp he has a high chance to transform into a giant ape and I believe he was one of the first giant apes that had this, but he also has a key plus two passive as a giant ape. So it makes it a lot easier to super attack with him. So this guy, very reliant on RNG, but there absolutely will be people out there where this guy can just win you the run by getting the RNG of his passive going off. Um, of course, there's the flip side to that where you put him in slot one. And his passive doesn't go off at all, and he gets absolutely destroyed by multiple attacks, including super attacks. But, hey, that's the way Super Battle Road goes sometimes, unfortunately. So, Comba, definitely a solid option. If you're a newer player, you're obviously not going to have him, because he was not featured on the Hero's Banner. So, your chances of pulling him, even if you did summon... I mean, bear in mind, across the, ba the main banner and the EZA banner, I probably did over 1500 stones and i didn't pull any extra copies of him i already have him with a couple of dupes from the year that he came out but i didn't pull any extra copies of him this year so it's very likely if you're a newer player you don't have him at all but he can be very very useful so next up we have the bergamo so everyone was raving about this guy when he got his awakening he is pretty good uh, he gets attack and defense 30 percent with each attack received up to 300 percent but the thing you have to bear in mind is that that is his only passive. So at the start of the turn, when he hasn't taken any hits, he has no defense. So you've got to be very careful. If you have a defensive item active and you put him in front of a load of attacks, then obviously you can get that build up early and that can be pretty good. He raises defense on super, so that gives him a little bit of a buff before he starts taking hits. But in slot one, maybe not quite the ideal pick. Um... But he's a solid unit. He has a rare chance of transforming when HP is 80% or less. And then he does not have a transformed passive. So unfortunately there's no uh, extra chance to like uh, get key or extra super or anything like that. But he can still be very effective. Um, I don't know if he's like a top pick for the team. Because he's really good in longer events where you can get this build up early on when you're not taking a lot of damage. But for like extreme super battle road where it's very easy to just die in turn one if things don't go your way. He's probably not the best unit. But he's still a solid pick for the team. Next up we have the uh, Piccolo Jr. from the Dragon Ball Saga banner that comes around every world tournament. Definitely not a unit that everybody is going to have. But there are some ways in which he can be useful. So he lowers the enemy's attack by being on rotation, which is useful. And has a medium chance to stun the attacked enemy. Obviously stuns can always be useful in Super Battle Road. But other than that, he's not great. Because as you can see from his passive, like he doesn't have any defense. So especially in ESBR, I actually don't even know if he is worth bringing. I put him in here as an honorable mention because of the passive attack lowering and the stunning. But thinking about it now, with how much harder ESBR hits than the normal SBR, like he will take a lot of damage. So maybe he isn't the best chance, best choice. But, you know, if you've got no other option, you can bring him along. Uh, he again doesn't have a giant form passive so no extra benefits there so he probably is like the lowest on the list out of all of these units and finally we have the demigra finally got an awakening after a long time uh last year well earlier this year for global uh, and that gives him the ability to transform into the crazy monster demigra who does get a uh, little bit of a key bonus and has a chance to stun so just like the easy eight apes this can be really useful on his final turn um, and then pre-transformation, he's got reasonable attack and defense. Uh, he also gets a buff when all allies attacking in the same turn are extreme. It's a bit harder to do that when you consider the fact that Tapion is probably the best unit on this entire category. Um, and you kind of want to be running him on both rotations. But obviously, depending on how you build your team, there is the possibility of getting this. This guy is probably more of a third slot floating unit though. So I would not try and build the team to be fully extreme just to get this and sacrifice using Tapion because Tapion is just too good but he's pretty good he obviously has a medium chance to stun on super and then a high chance to stun on his passive so you are more than likely going to stun the enemy that he attacks 
There's no way to tell until the next turn which version of the stun it was that went off, because if it's the one from his passive, they're only stunned for that turn. So you'll see the symbol appear, but then when you go into the next turn, that enemy won't be stunned anymore. But if they are, then it was the medium chance from his uh, super attack that went off. But it's useful because even if for whatever reason he can't super attack on that particular turn, because links can be a bit of an issue on this team, um, then obviously you still actually have that chance to stun for one turn and potentially protect him in slot three. So, yeah, not as many units to go through for this one. Uh, the free-to-play Great 8 Bardock is not the worst unit in the world. I used him on the Team Bardock uh, SBR stage, but he was definitely one of the weaker units on the team. He's the only, like, free-to-play leader. So, I mean, for free-to-play, I would imagine this ESBR stage is going to be nigh on impossible. But uh, Turles is okay because of his stun chance, but he's an older one of these ape units that did not get an easy A, so his defense is terrible. Uh, Tora is a support unit that lowers attack on super, but his defense is absolutely terrible. Same goes for basically all of the Team Bardock Great Apes. Uh, the Super Saiyan 3 Great Ape Goku is a support unit, but again, his defense is absolutely terrible. So it's nice to give everyone a little bit of an attack buff, but he can't take a hit to save his life. So very, very tricky. And then that's basically it for the TURs. So... I feel like this one is going to be the most difficult one for a lot of people. Let me know what your team build for this will look like down below in the comment section. Okay, there you go. So that is going to conclude this guide. Uh, make sure, like I said at the start, you let me know down below if there's a unit that I didn't talk about or you think I should have talked in more detail about and we can discuss that further in the comments and let me know what your team is going to look like. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.